Hi there and welcome to another comic book corner. New comics this week, only four to get through and we're going to kick off straight away with number one, premier issue, Zatanna. This apparently is a huge deal, I think, I believe this is her first ongoing series. Um, she's always been part of a team, Justice League of America, or she's like appeared in things like Books of Magic. Um, she seems to be, I don't really know much about her, but it just looked a bit interesting. First issue's always a bit of an addiction with me anyway. Um, so I thought I'd pick it up, don't know a lot about it, but I was really impressed with this. Um, dispensing with pretty much introductions, um, Deanie's expecting us to know a lot about Zatanna and her history. Um, like I said, I didn't really know much about who she was, so I had a quick look on the internet to see what she's about, and she does seem to be the um, go-to girl when you want someone's mind wiping. Um, but this was really good. We've got the um, first page. We have her uh, strapped to, to a cross, in chains, a gag around her mouth, and a drill about to come up from behind with Joker, what appears to be Joker and Dr. Light in the background. Um, but of course, everything's not what it seems, an illusion. It's actually one of her, her stage acts, and of course, the Joker and Dr. Light are just played by actors. Uh, and then we just get thrown straight into the first story arc, which is um, originally until she reads some butler or waiter's mind, um, a seemingly hit on the California, was it the Californian Underworld? I think it was. And it's all a bit strange because people are looking like frogs, they've been ripped apart, they're hanging from ceilings and obviously Zatanna knows this has all got to do with a bit of magic and she deduces from reading this waiter's mind that it's actually uh, Brother Knight, he's fed up of ruling the um, the underworld, the, myth uh, the magical mystical world and he wants a piece of ours so he decides to send a little message going look people this is what I can do this is my town now and we get introduced to to some of his um, rather scary team members uh, and what they can do so Zatanna kicks off and decides to go and have a word with him and say oh look you um, you stay out of my realm and I'll stay out of, out of yours. Um, obviously he's not too happy about that and tries, well, with the help from his um, team members, tries to stop her. She shows them who's boss and goes out with a big bang. Cue gratuitous nude scene as she gets in the bath. And um, back to Brother Knight who decides he's going to enlist some help and Again, I have no idea who Brother Knight is. He, he's just evil, obviously, because he's got um, deep black eyes and he's all wrinkly and old. So he goes off to some other realm to find someone else to help him out in um, killing off Zatanna. And he finds someone called, well, the Great Fuseli. Again, don't know who this is. I'm going to have to look up that as well. But obviously he's <laughs> he's a rather evil character. He's green. He's got long, long pointy ears, a manacle grin on his face, and of course he's sitting on a bunch of um, dead bodies with their eyes sewn together. For a first issue, it was a great ride. I suggest you pick it up. I hope it continues on. Um, brightest day issue number two. Where is this going? I mean, essentially, this is now issue three, and we still have no idea what is going on. It's so choppy. I mean, you you can't settle on one storyline for more than, like, a few pages. I mean, we start off with Firestorm. Big explosion. Don't know what happened after that. It moves to this family event where they're all around the TV playing some Guitar Hero game. Mum comes um, 
Mum comes in, kills them all in various ways, and then she starts pulling her skin off and shouting the Martian Manhunter's name. And am I meant to know who this character is? They look a bit as if they're coming from Blackest Night. I don't know. Then we get just a page of the Martian Manhunter, but I'll forgive them because we get a bit more later on. Jumps to Hawkman. Again, three pages over, back to Martian Manhunter. A few more pages of that and a bit of backstory about these two old people and how he brought the Martian Manhunter to come and help them. Then a page, you get a panel, one panel of the guy who's on the front cover, Aquaman, of him diving into the sea and leaving a trail of dead fish behind him and dead man or a live man or whatever you want to call him now going wait wait even though no one can see him or hear him anyway and that's that and you was like well where are those two off to no idea and then dead man gets transported by his ring to uh oh right in front of um anti-monitor and the ring says fight him are you as lost as I am? <sighs> John's is really going to have to sort this out. We need to know or, you know, have some idea of where this is going. It's just a whole mess right now. And it's, what is this? Is this six issues? And we're already almost halfway through. And there's... It's not as even if it's progressing up to something and you've had a bomb hit here, a bomb hit there. No. I, the thing with this is I've invested so much into it already. I mean, I've got three issues of it now. It would be a shame to stop. But I also feel like I'm wasting my money because it's not doing anything. Anyway, pick it up if you want to. Another one that's as confusing, I guess... But um, at least they try and explain a few bits. And that's Justice League of America, number 45. It's the, um, I guess you call it the prologue to the new, the next, or another crossover with the JSA. Um, Green Lantern from the JSA. He's gone into some sort of green coma. Um, and he's being pulled towards where this green crystals drop down that we saw at the end of last um, issue um, Jade, his daughter, emerged from. And then you just get a huge splash page of Power Girl crashing right through the JSA airplane and she does appear to be heading for um, the now comatose Obsidian and Green Lantern. So Supergirl, Power Girl try and beat each other senseless but obviously they've got the same powers each as each other so they kind of just cancel each other out and they're just going to keep going at it and at it until someone intervenes and in this case it's um, it's Jade because she's green and what's like green? Kryptonite but Batman, Dick Grayson, he uses the idea that she's she's magic so obviously Supergirl and Power Girl being of that kind of race gets affected by magic so Jace the big ass and breaks them up um, and then Jay tries to explain the whole what this crystal is and apparently and I, I love this line um, I'll, I've got to read this out Jay basically says um, to that end the Guardians locked up all the wild untamable chaotic elements of the universe and then um, Wildcat goes, how in the hell did they do that? Now that might sound like a very complicated question to answer. But Jade just goes, well, they're little blue immortals with supreme power and intelligence, Ted. Hello. That's a good answer. Covers a lot of bases. And so, yes, it goes on from there. We find out that this green crystal, a shard of it, is affecting superheroes here, there and everywhere. Villains alike, they're not acting like they should do. 